Right, it's 7.30 a.m. and welcome to quite literally the gates of hell. Well, the gates of the production, production hell. hell at least. We're here at Tesla's enormous Fremont factory. You can see it in the background, looks a little bit like the Death Star from Star Wars, doesn't it? This is where they build the Model 3, or where they had quite a lot of trouble building enough Model 3s. Elon Musk had to sleep in the factory to sort it out. Apparently they're ramping up now to their target of half a million cars a year, but we're going to go inside there today, take a look around, take a tour, see how they're getting on, see how this company builds their cars differently to everyone else. But that is just the beginning of quite a day that we have in store because once we've done a whistle stop tour of that, we're going to jump in the Model 3 performance and set off on a road trip, a road trip to Los Angeles. Five and a half hours drive, 360 miles odd. There will be supercharging along the way if we want to actually make it there. And the reason we're on a road trip is because they're revealing the new Model Y tonight at the Los Angeles yeah. Design Center. Bit of a tight schedule. Um, it's going to be a bit squeaky, uh, but hopefully this will give you an insight into how this unique company and its products operate. Right, let's go and get frisked, shall we? Come on. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to production hell. Pretzels. What do you reckon small my look? Chelsea boots or sneakers? Right, so this is going to keep us safe in the Tesla factory. As the saying goes, if, you, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> We've just been told that this factory is bigger than the Vatican City, which is a nice little fact, isn't it? And interesting that Tesla is comparing itself to uh, a religious destination. I suppose I should give you some actual information. Apparently Tesla bought this place for $42 million off GM, which uh, is quite a lot of money, but not that much when you consider it's invested three and a half billion dollars in it since. Just quickly, this is the Model 3 stamping line in action. It's just word into life. 43 tons these dies. There's three of them. The idea is you get a blank sheet of metal. It stamps the basic shape. It trims the edges and then the third one pierces the holes and finishes off the panel. Absolutely epic, all automated. These dies roll in and out on their own. Industry in action. Look at this madness. We've actually found some humans working inside the Tesla factory. This is one of the few bits that can't be fully automated. They're just checking the panels as they come off the line, sanding off the edges, giving them the final check, and then it's stacked up in these massive pallets over here. All right, so apparently this over here is the biggest hydraulic press in the factory, also the biggest hydraulic press in North America. See that massive red cube over there? So apparently that weighs about 500 tonnes, stamps out the sides of the Model S. Yeah, 500,000 kilograms of pressure pouring down on one steel panel. You really don't want to get your nuts caught in that. All right, see over here how densely packed the robots are? That's because this is the Model 3 body line. So apparently the most automated body line of any car factory anywhere in the world. Quite a cool thing. You see the robots on the floor? They're robots. And there's also ones hanging off the ceiling and they call those robots. Quite like that. So this is Model 3 general assembly up here. It's called the brick because it's so densely packed in. They've got to produce so many of they, these cars that they need to use every last square foot. This is the point where the battery pack built in the Gigafactory in Nevada is slotted up underneath and into the Model 3. It's all happening up there. And this, if it's all gone to plan, is where it all ends. The final Model S and Model X production. The doors are on, the trim's in, the seats are in. That one just rolled off the line, off to the test track, and then eventually off to the customers. Unless, of course, you're a European customer, in which case the powertrain and body are disassembled and then reassembled again at the Tilburg plant in the Netherlands. But it's a beautiful process, one that involves more robots than any other car factory in the world. And that, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is how a Tesla is made. <sighs> right, that's quite enough of the factory stuff. We've got a big road trip ahead of us, a lot of miles to cover. I'm far more interested in how these cars actually drive, so let's get cracking. So the car then, what we have here is a Model 3 Performance, so it's the fast one, the one you want. 444 horsepower, 0 to 60, three and a half seconds, four wheel drive, stonking acceleration, but we're not worried about acceleration for this bit, at least. We're worried about range. 
we're here to get to LA in time for the Model Y reveal event this evening and we're gonna have to stop off at a supercharger or two along the way. We've plugged in Kettleman Supercharger, which we're told is one of the biggest supercharger stations in the world and there's a lounge for us to hang out in, which sounds quite appealing. So that's what we're aiming for, but there's a lot of miles to cover before then. What I thought I'd show you is the autopilot system that you get in the Model 3, you get in all the Teslas as well. It's just a little bit better. It's, the technology isn't necessarily different to the stuff you get in Audis and, and Jaguars and stuff like that. It just seems to work a little bit smoother. It's a bit more intuitive. It lets you take your hands off the wheel for a bit longer. It seems to have softer edges between the white lines. So it works like this. I'm cruising along here at about 70 miles an hour. One tap down on this stalk and the cruise control is on. So you can adjust the speed here. Right, so we're now cruising. It's radar cruise control, so it'll keep the distance of the car in front at 65 miles an hour on the freeway. All well and good, but you have to do the steering yourself. Boring. So what you really want is the autopilot mode. That's two clicks down when you've got a gray steering wheel here. That goes blue, and now it's taken over the steering. So you'll see there's a car there between two blue lines. Other cars around you pop up on the screen just to let you know that the car is sensing its surroundings, and that's it it's taken over. It's driving me between the lines at my desired speed, which is 65 miles an hour, precisely the speed limit. Thank you very much. Yeah, it uh, takes a little bit of time to trust the system. The first time you do it, you kind of sit here with your hands hovering somewhere near the wheel, but once you've got it, it actually work, works really well. You can just relax, you can sit back, you can let the car take the strain. And with the car taking the strain, well, I've got more time to worry about my range basically. Range anxiety is a thing, whether Tesla choose to admit it or not. I've got a little number up there, it says the battery percentage. It doesn't tell you your exact range because that's fluctuating all the time depending on how you're driving. You see I've got a number here, 84, 83%. Now not very long ago that said 99%. I swear that is dropping too fast for us to reach our destination. The computer says it isn't. If I hit a little arrow here, and I press that, that says energy. Yes, here it is, look. So we get a graph on the screen. So you see we're on 83% here, this is our journey. And it says we're gonna arrive with 34% battery, 35% battery when we get to the other end. I'll have to trust the computers on this one, but there is a tension that comes with it and you find yourself constantly glancing at it, checking the sat nav. You don't wanna go too fast. It's where the autopilot system really helps because it means you don't mind so much doing the speed limit kicking back, letting the car take the strain, and just cruising along. Ah, 28, 30% range still remaining. This uh, Tesla road tripping lark is easy, isn't it? Um, I thought while I was here, I'll just show you how you supercharge a Tesla. First thing to do is open the charging port. Only an idiot will get out the car without doing that first. Just one second. There we go, that pops open. Grab the plug, shove it in. And that's it. It's a lot easier than filling up with petrol or diesel and getting it all over your shoes, isn't it? Um, the account is linked to the car, so it'll cost you about $20 to fill up, unless the car belongs to Tesla, in which case it's free. But just look at this place, incredible. 40, 50 superchargers there must be here. One of the biggest in the world. The biggest, in fact, is in China, where they've got 50 or 52 superchargers, I think. But how long before every petrol station in the world looks a little bit like this? Mind-blowing. Anyway, let's check out the lounge. Just plugging in my special Tesla lounge code there, which comes up on the car's sat-nav, so only Tesla drivers can get in this lounge. So what's it look like? The world's only Tesla supercharger lounge. Well, a lot like any other lounge, really, in an airport or anywhere else. Um, comfy seating over there vending machines with oversized American snacks over there. Over here, look, a craft coffee bar. Oh yes, this is good. Check out the merchandise. Look, you can get a Kettleman City, California t-shirt. Imagine if they sold t-shirts at the Esso Crouch End. Just wouldn't have the same ring to it. Even the cups are branded up. Look at this. Model S, Model X. The Model 3 cups obviously haven't come through yet. 
very pleasant, isn't it? Okay, it is a bit annoying having to stop for 50 minutes an hour and fill up your car rather than five minutes to fill it with petrol, but if the future is sitting around in comfy leather seats, drinking nice coffee and checking your emails, I'm all for it. Okay, so back on the road, full supercharged. We have 95% battery, which feels good. 173 miles to our destination, that's three hours, 17 minutes, and it says we're gonna arrive at the Model Y reveal event at 7.20 p.m. Apparently, the event kicks off at 7.45, so it's a little bit squeaky. Am I worried? Pfft, nah. This being a Tesla, there are some other things within the menu to keep you amused on a long trip. If I hit this Tesla symbol at the top, you get a picture of your dual motor Model 3, and then some spangly little symbols up here. If I hit the whoopee cushion, oh yes, the emissions testing mode. Fart mode, basically. So I'm gonna hit fart on demand. You can choose which fart you wanna go for, and more importantly, which corner of the car you want it to come from. We'll go front left. That, by the way, is known as a Falcon Heavy. There are other types of fart available. Um, this one's called a Short Shorts Ripper. Yeah. Uh, this one's called a Ludicrous Fart. <laughs> or even more amusingly, you can do fart on turn signal. So, I've switched that on. Put my indicator on. And it will do various farts of different volumes and lengths. Oh, there we go. Um, Oh, that was a good one actually. Um, and you'll notice actually, that was an interesting test there, that the car actually changed lane for me. So when you're in autopilot mode, click the indicator, the line goes perforated and it moves over for us. All to the sound of a fart. Extraordinary, isn't it? Imagine uh, Audi or Vauxhall even. Imagine Vauxhall putting a fart mode in the next Astra. You just can't see it happen, can you? Tesla, you love them, you hate them, but they do do things differently. And the childish side to Tesla, well, I quite like. Guess what? We've only gone and made it, haven't we? Feeling more than a little bit frazzled, but we're here. Well, nearly here, we're stuck in LA traffic as you'd expect, but the autopilot's doing its thing. I don't even have to touch the wheel. 1.3 miles till we get there, six minutes. We're gonna get there at quarter past seven, which is easy street. We're gonna be absolutely fine. Charge remaining, 22%. A little bit less than it said we were gonna have, but still comfortable. So, here we come, few minutes. Model Y, a brand new Tesla. I think a bit of pop a shirt on for this. All right, part three of the big Tesla fanboy road trip, and we've made it to LA, we've made it to the Tesla Model Y event. You can probably see the Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket over my shoulder. But, and this is quite a big but, we've just been told that despite flying all the way from the UK, James and Rowan, videographer and photographer extraordinaire, aren't allowed into the event. So, I'm going gorilla. I'm going all in with nothing but an iPhone. That's right. I'm gonna be filming the Model Y. Do I just press this, Jack? Just literally just that. Hopeless. Anyway, um, wish me luck. From what I'm about to film, I can only apologize. See you in a bit. Check it out, look, I've gone full influencer uh, with my uh, earphones in. Don't worry, I'm not being antisocial. The reason I've got these in is because I'm running off the microphone into my iPhone. That's how high tech this video is. But anyway, here we are at the launch. Over here is the main stage. Supposedly in about 10 minutes, Elon Musk is going to be on there giving a speech about the Model Y. What happens after that? No one really knows. There will be a new car. There will be Elon Musk, that much we know. But the rest, it's a complete mystery. And I'm definitely not just standing around on my own trying to fill time, all right? In a bit. Right, so the basic setup for this is there's two press rooms, one outside, one behind the stage. I've basically been told that the media can either go and hang out in there and watch Elon's speech on a live feed, or you can get involved in here in what I'm going to call the bear pit, 
with the public uh, and obviously I'm going to get stuck in here because I want maximum Tesla nutter. I've heard that these events can get quite evangelical, people falling to the ground and feeling the power of Elon running through their body and that's the kind of weirdness that I want to see. So um, stick with me, see what we can get. has the, the functionality of, a, of an SUV, but will, it will ride like a sports car. So we expect to have a, a three and a half seconds, zero to 60, a very low center of gravity, so great uh, handling, an actual true usable range of 300 miles. And, and by the way, after, after I'm done here, you guys will be able to come up and like check out the car. So, uh, so. All right, here we go. Model Y passenger ride. Uh, which model is this? Is this the performance model? It's a long range dual motor. Long range dual motor. I've just spent the entire day uh, driving from San Francisco to here in the uh, in the Model 3 Performance. So it's all quite familiar in here, same screen. Just a little higher up. That's it, we've been in the Model Y, we're getting booted out. Thank you very much. What did I learn from that experience? Um, yeah, not much really. So anyway, tick, tick, tick. We've got the full Tesla launch experience. We've been for a ride in the car. Let's go inside and see if we can actually poke around the new model. All right, I've, uh, I've located a Model Y. This is our chance to have a bit of a closer look at the new car. Again, apologies for the quality, but I'll do my absolute best. Let's turn this camera around so you can get an actual look at it. it looks quite a lot like a Model 3, doesn't it? This is the sister car to the Model 3, after all, so I don't know why I'm sounding surprised about that. But what have we learned about this car? Well, the fastest one will do 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds, just like the Model 3. There's the same sort of range, really, a standard one, an all-wheel drive dual motor one, uh, a performance version. Um, it's a baby SUV, it's about 10% bigger, so it's got a bigger boot, it's got a hatchback, it's got a bit more space inside. The one surprise seemed to catch the crowd and myself off guard is the fact that the Model Y actually has seven seats. They're optional and I very much doubt that you could fit proper adults in the back, but there is the option seven seats. The most interesting thing though was the fact that Elon Musk said, Yeah, I think it'll probably sell, I think we'll probably do more Model Ys than S, X, and 3 combined, most likely. Yeah. He also took us right back to the beginning of the company to when he first introduced the Roadster in 2008 to the point when there was only one prototype on the road and then he reminded us that by the end of next year there'll be a million Teslas driving around. Yes, the Teslarati are a bit evangelical. You can get swept up in it and drink the Kool-Aid but I have to say that when you hear the man himself talk about the struggles he went through building this company from nothing to where it is today and all in just 10 years, well, it's really quite remarkable. There you are, boys. You're supposed to meet me around the corner. Anyway, right, there's literally reams of shoddy footage on that and on that. Do with it what you will. Um, tell you what, being a Tesla fanboy for a day is flipping knackering. I am well and truly Eloned out. Bed for me.